So let's start doing some examples. The first example from the sheet I handed out, if anyone is an influential influence peddler, every registered lobbyist, you didn't have too much trouble. Uh, Diamond Eye, that means if any, anyone is an influence peddler, uh, Graph and RI, everyone is, every registered lobbyist is an influence peddler. It's a simple implication. Then we looked at a yuppie who is either a real estate agent or a lawyer is self-respecting. At least you get, if you run into something that's a little more difficult, uh, one trick is to ask yourself what kind of formula is it going to be? Is it going to be a predication which says that either an individual or all individuals of a certain type or some individuals of a certain type of a property? Uh, is it going to be a Boolean combination? Or, or is it going to be a relational operation where you've got slash, tilt, and star? Now we look at that. <laughs> ruled out Boolean combination and relation operation and decided that it's all, it's of the form all of certain things are a certain thing, although we noticed that A in English is ambiguous, uh, whereas any would be unambiguously like this. Anyway, we're assuming it's that. And what we decided is that um, the property they have, all these things have, is being self-respecting. And who are the people that have these properties? Those are that have the property of zero is a yuppie and a real estate agent or a lawyer. Now this is a Boolean combination of Y, E, and L. In fact, it's this Boolean combination. Whereas self-respecting is the diagonalization of the respect operator, which is S. We put it all together and we get this one up here. So our next fairly challenging one is any lion Tom Selleck is chasing is a formidable animal, but is not ferocious. Uh, so C is the binary relation of one chasing zero. T is Tom Selleck. L is the property of being a lion. F is the property of being ferocious. And A is the property of being a formidable animal. So leaving aside the question of who Tom Selleck is, let's proceed. Uh, we decided that it's not a Boolean combination. Selleck is saying that everything of one type is of a, everything having one property has another property. Any is the giveaway. Whenever you see any, you're dealing with one of these, almost certainly. So what is this property? The property is that being a lion that Tom Selleck is chasing, we're talking about these things. And the property they have is being a formidable animal, but not being ferocious. Now, if we look at this, this is clearly a Boolean combination. It's saying that zero is a lion, and Tom Selleck is chasing zero. Uh, however, to get this, to, to get it down to symbols, we have to uh, put it in the passive voice. Say so zero is chased by Tom Selleck. Then we can extract Tom Selleck out, and we get one is chased by zero, and one is chased by zero is, is tilde C, C being one is chasing zero. Similarly, over here, this is clearly uh, the conjunction of being a formidable animal and not being ferocious, which we write as this way, but just means and. Uh, so when we put it all together, we get this. Everything that is a lion and is chased by Tom Selleck is a formidable animal and is not ferocious. So let me just say a bit about how we translate relational expressions into assertions involving 0 and 1 and 2 and so on. So suppose, for example, R is ternary, so it says 2 saw 1 accepting a gift from 0. That's what R says. Now, if we apply R to Socrates, uh, what it means is Socrates refers to the, the last name blank, namely 0. So what we do is we simply replace 0 by Socrates, and we decrement the others. So this becomes 1 saw 0 accepting a gift from Socrates. And the amazing thing is this works even for, if it's not just individuals, if it's quantifier phrases. Once we have a translation of the quantifier phrase, we do the same thing. So for example, um, angle brackets FG could mean some famous Greek. So if we put angle bracket FG in front of R, what we do is we replace zero by literally the word some famous Greek, decrement the numbers, and we saw once one saw zero accepting a gift from some famous Greek. And this works, it's very reliable. Nothing with natural language is 100% reliable, but it's very reliable. But it's very important that the original translation be in standard form, which is where you have 
the numbers in decreasing order without repetitions. You may omit some, but it has to be in decreasing order and you can't have repetitions. Now there's similar old group. Oops. There's similar rules for the relation operators. Uh, the rule for tilde is you swap 0 and 1, and now you're going to have to reword it, because, most likely, because if both 0 and 1 were present, they would be in the wrong order. So you have to reword them so they're in the right order. The great thing about natural language is you can almost always do that. Now with slash, what you do is you turn 1 into 0, so now most likely 0 is going to be appearing twice. That's not standard form. So what you have, you have to reword it so that zero appears only once. Um, star is very straightforward. You just increment all the numbers. You won't have to do any rewording. It'll still be in standard form. So for example, tilde C becomes zero is chasing one, which is reworded for, to get it into standard form. One is being chased by zero. Uh, slash C is zero is chasing zero, which we would reword to zero is chasing itself. Star C says that two is, is chasing one. Why do you want to say that? That's sort of a technical thing. Think of it as indirect speech. There's one thing for me to say that I was chasing you, but you're a friend, say that means um, the friend was chasing someone else.